A new Justice Department report confirmed what families had feared and were devastated by, that the police officials who responded to the deadly shooting in Uvalde, Texas, there was a series of cascading failures. The report said officers did not demonstrate any urgency in setting up a command post and failed to treat the killing as an active shooter situation. 21 people, including 19 students, died at Robb Elementary School in May of 2022. The Department of Justice says kids may have been saved if officers had responded differently. The report identified a long list of problems, including failed communication, inadequate technology and training that federal officials said contributed to the crisis lasting longer than it should ever have. Giving you a live look right now near the Eisenhower Tunnel and the Loveland Ski Area. It has been such a rough week just to get around, especially in the high country, based off of all the weather we've been having. We're going to head right over to Keeley right now. And I know the cold snap is done, but we still got some weather to really keep in mind for the next couple of days, especially up in the mountains. Absolutely. Still getting some snow up in the mountains, coupled that with the winds. We're getting blowing snow, still making for some tough travel conditions. But hey, the cold isn't over. In fact, we're tracking a sharp cold front making its way through Colorado right now. In fact, it has just made its way. I've been looking at it all morning long into the metro area or in, out at DIA, actually, where this uh, temperature is being recorded. 31 degrees, so it dropped about 16, 17 degrees in a matter of minutes out there as the sharp cold front moves through. So again, we're going to see those temperatures drop as we head into the afternoon, as we head into the evening. So you can see here, see the color change. This is the deep purple. This is the front out in front of the uh, out in front of the front. You can see the lighter colors. This is where that cold air is moving in and really starting to drop those temperatures. 29 right now in Greeley, 28 degrees in Fort Collins. But as you can see, Colorado Springs still 55 degrees out there this afternoon. The other big story, those wind gusts gusting up to 44 miles per hour at DIA. And we are going to get a little bit more snow moving in. Not too much to talk about, but a little bit. We'll talk more about that coming up in your full forecast. Again, 47 our forecast high. We already reached that. Now we're just falling in temperature. Oh, my goodness. All right. We've been warned. It is here <laughs> during the show live. All yes. right. Thanks so much, Keely. Well, Denver is preparing to move migrant families with kids out of shelters again. This policy was temporarily paused in November, but now the Johnson administration says shelter space is just too limited. Denver will allow families to stay in city-run facilities for 42 days. That is up from the previous limit of 37 days. The city will also go back to enforcing rules on who qualifies for city-run shelters. Starting February 5th, people who do not have an A number and have not arrived in Denver within 30 days of coming to the U.S. Will will be asked to leave these shelters. Deputies had to start calling in for more help when a series of fights broke out during the big rivalry basketball game between Eagle Crest and Smoky Hill High School. As of now, we know one person had to go to the hospital. Some deputies were already there when the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office says these fights started to break out at around 9 p.m. The fights started both in and outside of the school. One man went to the hospital, but we don't know how badly he was hurt. Deputies say that this is still an active investigation. Colorado is seeing the lowest number of kids in public school in more than a decade now. Last year, there were 1,800 fewer students in Colorado public schools than the year before. That put the state's enrollment at its lowest point since 2013. Colorado has seen drops in three of the, four of the last four years. And for this school year, pre-K through first graders saw the largest combined enrollment decreases. So where are the kids going? Well, we know that the state saw the number of students counted as homeschooled full time jump by eight and a half percent, while the number of kids registered for online education programs also went up by three and a half percent. Now, where those public school numbers are concerned, the state's demographer says birth rates, which have been dropping for a long time, also have a lot to do with it. But there's this outlier not listed in the data, and it's tied to the recent surge of migrants coming to Colorado. Denver alone counts more than 2,700 new students since July. Many came after the official count date back in early October, and that was capturing the number used for school funding. That official state count shows Denver only gained 371 students. Denver Public School says the district is working to cover the costs of the extra students, but is also going to be asking the state for some help. We're almost doing a reverse where we're trying to figure out which schools are asking for more funding so that we can identify how many international kids 
have come in so that we can try and come up with an estimate of this total migration. DPS says they don't know how many new students have stayed here permanently, and we may not actually know that until next October. Right now, as Aurora Workers works out how to move forward after its interim police chief announced his departure, the city is entering a critical phase of the consent decree issued after Elijah McLean's death. That decree's goal is to fix how Aurora police officers use force and interact with people of color. Right now, the city is nearly two years in and says much of the work revising policies and training is done, but the department still needs to work out a disciplinary matrix and develop bias training. Earlier this week, Interim Chief Art Acevedo announced that he's leaving the department, and Interim Deputy Chief Heather Morris will be taking over for now. But Aurora's independent monitor says changeover during a consent decree is actually not unusual. He also doesn't think it will do anything to slow down progress. It's less about who sits in the, the seat of chief, chief of police uh, than it is about the mandates of the consent decree. We're moving into this new phase, which is really testing the operational integrity of the policies and the training to ensure that the people in the community are feeling the reforms. He also did say whoever is in that seat can make achieving the decree's mandates more or less difficult. Right now, Denver Public Schools is asking a judge to toss out a lawsuit claiming the district is discriminating against straight students by allowing LGBTQ pride flags but not a straight pride flag. A parent at Slavin's Elementary wants $3 million from the district because he claims the district is discriminating against his kids. That parent says Slavin's displays small rainbow flags outside of classroom entrances and that he's tried for a year to have a heterosexual pride flag added to those displays. In their request to have the lawsuit dismissed, DPS is pointing to a 2020 school board resolution that is supporting the pride flag displays as part of a larger effort to be inclusive of LGBTQ students specifically. The district also argues as a government entity, they don't have to quote, give airtime to all views. Former Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani is being accused of trying to skirt a $150 million verdict. The two Georgia election workers who were awarded that sum are saying he's now taking advantage of the bankruptcy system. When Giuliani filed for bankruptcy around the same time as that verdict, he was given an immediate pause for paying back debts of any sort. He's also looking to appeal this decision. The filing from the two election workers also claims Giuliani is still defaming them as recent as this month by claiming they tallied fraudulent votes in the 2020 election. Apple is now the top seller of smartphones in the wor world. iPhone sales have now topped Samsung, ending that company's 12-year run at the top of the list. According to a report from International Data Corps, Apple commanded a 20% market share in 2023, while Samsung checked in at 19.4%. The change in ranking comes after a tough year that saw consumers pretty hesitant to upgrade their smartphones and then choosing cheaper handsets because of high inflation and economic uncertainties.